Flagstaff. USPS Flagstaff. This is uh, it's August 29th for about two weeks, uh, one day short of two weeks from when this flood occurred here. We're estimating it was uh, 67,000 uh, cubic feet per second. This falls was not visible before the water used to access so much farther over to the right there. We found an incredible amount of material here. This is uh, First Falls in uh, Abyssin Canyon. Uh, this area here, formerly the, the main channel is way off to the left, about 400 feet over. You can see the cottonwoods over there. And there used to be a little side channel cut here from the 93 floods. So this is all cut out, this storm, this whole big cut here, all blew out. This falls was not visible uh, previous to this year. Now all the flow is going down this way. Oh, this, this uh, as part of the travertine dam, all these, all this travertine blew out uh, and eroded away. We'll go down to uh, Navajo Falls next, and supposedly there's no water there. It used to be a beautiful waterfall that's gone. The water's all cutting around it now. This is Steve Willey, USGS, August 29, 2008. We're a little farther downstream from where Greg was last talking. This here is a new waterfall that was formed during this high flow. You can see just above it a thick, fine sediment layer, which was scoured out to form this gorge here during this last flow. It looks like it's scoured down to the uh, to a hard rock layer here with the falls is going over. But looking upstream, it appears that the uh, scour here is a result of a uh, uh, rapid cutting down through the sedimentary layer. This is farther downstream again. You can see there are a lot of tension fra fractures in, these, in the trail along here. And there's some seepage coming out farther below, so this looks fairly precarious. I'm looking across another view of the, the new falls here and the falls upstream. Here's a spot farther downstream where the trail's been completely undermined. There's still some blocks here, but a lot of it is slumped down into the canyon. Looking across the little canyon here, you can see the, uh, the fence right along the rim that's been undermined. Deep chasm underneath it. Here's another view of the scour downstream from the falls. Here's the new channel. You can see some high water marks on the trees there. And looking up you can see Navajo Falls, what used to be Navajo Falls, which is now dry. This is a reach below uh, what used to be Navajo Falls. You can see the channel has incised here. I'm standing on a, what was probably the, part of the old channel or an area adjacent to the old channel. The trunk of that tree is partially buried. You can see the flow came over this, this bench here. It's now a bench. There were blocks of travertine washed up. Moved, it was probably transported during the high flow in large debris piles here. So the flow is probably up here early on, and then the, uh, the scour of the channel followed. That's the Havasupai Cemetery up on the hill. There's a channel that's scoured down immediately below it. Looks like there's a travertine cap with some softer sediments underneath it. 
in the middle of the, of the picture there, you can see one of the uh, bridge abutments for a bridge that used to go across the channel here. There's another abutment. And there's an anchor for the bridge. You can see considerable damage to the, uh, the pieces still, uh, still intact there. This is the Havasupai Cemetery again, up on the hill. You can see in the uh, cut here, there appears to be a Trinity cap under the cemetery, right here, but with uh, very soft sediments immediately underneath it. There's another Trinity plug here on the upstream end of the cemetery. And it looks like a travertine layer underneath the south sediment as well. But it looks very erodible. We're a little downstream from Pippin Cliff Falls. On the trail here you can see tension fractures on the side. And in one location up here a little bit. There's some offset by a few inches in this fracture.